So I wanted to do a video about uh, producing actual products over many decades and how you have to change. You, a lot of times you'll run into troubles and you actually need to change the design. Sometimes you find an error, sometimes you, you know, uh, there might be other reasons that you need to uh, re re revise your, uh, your unit. And a lot of times you'll see numbers like uh, uh, 11, 7, 13, A, and then you might see a B model, a C model, a D model, and they're basically upgrades each time. Or sometimes the A, B, C, D means different configurations and stuff, but a lot, a lot of times it means that they had to, uh, they had to change the design over time. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at this particular type of device because I have three of them. <laughs> So they were cheap at the junk store, so they are now in my position, possession. Um, so we're going to take a look at uh, this particular uh, Hewlett Packard model. And the interesting thing is these three all say they're uh, the A version. Okay, so they're all exactly the same model and none of them match. There's differences in all of them, uh, cosmetic differences and uh, design differences inside. Um, so it's very, very interesting. So we'll take a look at um, why they had to change over time and, uh, and how they accomplished that. They got into some trouble and then they had to fix it somehow and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll see how they fixed it. So you can see some of these have the old HP logo with the uh, colored, uh, colored uh, logo here and these are uh, raised plastic ones. So um, yeah, they're, they're of different vintages. This particular um, unit was designed probably in the late 70s. I know, I know by the early 80s they were selling these in, in, in mass quantities. So, um, and I believe this unit here dates from, the, from around 1980. Um, and these are a little bit newer. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's first take a look at the uh, cosmetic differences. All right, so this is one of the very first ones. And uh, the first thing is that the switch, this switch is different than the other two, all right? This, this switch is a CNK switch, and these are different. This one pushes, this is a plastic switch that pushes in from the outside, and this is a switch that bolts on from the inside. Um, if we take a look at the logo, like I said, that was different. And we, then we take a look at the font of the, uh, of the silk screening on the front and stuff here. And uh, we notice that it doesn't match. Um, it doesn't match the other ones. The, uh, uh, the font is a little bit different on this one, okay? And on this one, uh, I think you can hear it. Yeah, the, uh, the front isn't even attached very well on this one. Um, but uh, yeah, these 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 uh, cosmetics are different. So they've the uh, you can I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, like the font for the lo lo local here and local here, it's just a little bit different. So some different they changed vendors. So obviously um, this one's pretty old, and then they updated it and they went to a new vendor, and then they ran out of that vendor and they had to go to a different vendor. So. Um, these two are, are very close, but definitely the font is different. So they were sent to, they were definitely sent to a different vendor. Um, all right. Like I said, switch is different. Uh, let's take a look at the, the box itself. Uh, the box itself is different. Uh, these have a painted bezel and this one's raw aluminum. It has a clear overcoat. Um, and otherwise, these pieces are the same. Uh, this one looks like it was made by a different manufacturer than these two. These two look, they all actually, you know, all three of them look a little bit different. All three look they were, like they were sourced from different vendors. <coughs> and then we'll take a look at the, uh, take a look at the back. Um, do I notice any big differences on the back? Uh, yes. So this one here, uh, the uh, HPIB connector is, uh, there's a little cutout here on this back aluminum piece and then this bolts onto it. Uh, this one here 
has a separate a little aluminum plate that spaces it out and allows the uh, 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 this to bolt on. So some design change was made on the on the back panel as well. Otherwise, uh, otherwise they're pretty much pretty much the same in the pretty much the same in the back. But uh, the real difference is, is on the on the inside on one particular card. So let's uh, let's take a look at the inside of these things. All right. So the, one of the differences uh, that I noticed when I got this older one is that it's using positive drive screws, and the other one used torque screws. So they've changed from back in the old days. Everything at HP was positive drive, and uh, this one's definitely positive drive, and the screw was painted over too. Which is which is interesting. All right, so let's take a quick look inside. I've showed this before on a different video. Um, one of the differences between the different units is the transformer. Uh, this is an old transformer that was actually wound by Hewlett Packard. So they had their own manufacturing facility to do uh, transformers. So this is the old HP transformer. The other two use a uh, transformer that was sourced out to a different company. Uh, these two diodes, these are, these are diodes, believe it or not, these two big diodes are different on this unit than the other units. The other units just use like a little, regular little plastic uh, diode. These are in these big uh, TO5 cans, so uh, those are different than the other two, and this is different than the other two. This is a clamping circuit, so if something really drastically goes wrong, they clamp the 24 volts to ground and blow the fuse. Uh, so this is an SCR, that's the uh, clamping mechanism. All right, so those are differences definitely between that and the other ones. Um, let's see here. There was differences on this card. I'll show you this card. Uh, this is the driver card, and uh, the relays are different on this one. These are clear relays. Same manufacturer, uh, Japanese manufacturer, um, Aromat, and, uh, but the other ones you'll see are uh, in uh, uh, solid plastic. They're, they don't have clear. Um, and this one has an aluminum heat sink for the transistors. The other ones have a, just a plastic spacer. So that was a design, a design change, probably for cost. They said, ah, we really don't need that aluminum. These things aren't getting hot. And so we'll go ahead and use a piece of plastic. And that'll be, that'll be cheaper. All right. So the real differences that I want to talk about today are on this card here. And... Uh, Oh, great, the trash man is out front. Um, this says handshake and data input. So this is for the HPIB, GPIB, IEEE 488. Um, and this is a, a design that they did. And it has two components that are uh, going to be, in the future, hard to find. So, you know, if we had a premonition, we could, we could know that maybe these things would be difficult to get in the future. But one of them is a comparator. It is a five wide input comparator. It's, it's, it's comparing five bits to five bits. So it has 10 bits input and one bit output. You know, do they match or do they not match? So it's a five bit to five bit comparator. That's gonna be a hard, hard chip to find in the future, okay? So they're gonna to have to deal with that. This over here is also a special part that they're gonna to have to deal with. Uh, this is a PROM, a programmable read-only memory. And uh, this looks like it may have been a masked ROM, and it was built special for HP. And it is uh, eight inputs wide and four bits out. So eight in, four out for the 256 uh, by four PROM. And uh, that's, going to be, that's going to be a hard chip to find, all right? So remember those two chips, the uh, uh, Comparator and the prom. Oops, got that in backwards. So we'll put this back in. Very nice design. All right, let's take a look at unit number two. All right, I've had to find a uh, Torx, Torx driver. I have changed. All right. Okay, let's look inside this one. Uh, you can see the diodes have the diodes have changed. The SCR is now a smaller package. Uh, the transformer is uh, outsourced now. 
uh, to a company, so it's no longer built by HP. We've gone to the plastic uh, plastic uh, thing on the transistors. The uh, uh, relays are now different uh, different relay, same company, but they're now yellow and and they're not translucent. And the, the plastic spacer here. All right, so let's look at the card that we're interested in. This one. All right, so if we look at this one, um, it's a brand new design. Uh, the layout is, 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 is much more modern and different. The, the other board looked like it was hand laid out. If you took a look at the traces, it was def definitely a ruby lith hand laid out board. And this is a uh, modern CAD program board. And um, it has the HP logo. And it has these two chips that we talked about. Now, remember, they couldn't get this um, five bit wide comparator. And so they had to do something, they had to scramble. And so one of the designers decided, oh, hey, I could use a GAL 22V10. 22 means 22 inputs, V10 means 10 outputs, and so certainly we could have a 5 and 5, that's 10 inputs and 4 outputs. So they used a GAL part and uh, made their own 5x5 uh, five five comparator, so that was replaced. And then they also had a hard time finding this part, so this is a new part for the 8x4 uh, eight, eight PROM. I don't know if this was a programmable part that they programmed themselves, probably because it has a little sticker on it here. They probably had to program these in-house and then load them on. So they've had to change these two parts and they've had to relay out the board to accommodate those two new parts. Okay, so that was the revision that they had to do. So somewhere along the line, uh, somebody said, hey, we can't buy those parts anymore. Send it to the engineering group, see if they can do something. And the engineering group came up with this and says, okay, we'll have to spin that card. We'll have to... Uh, do something new. One guy came up with the idea of using a programmable logic device. Perfect application for it. Um, so that's the uh, middle age. Oh, let me read the date, dates off of this one. Uh, I didn't read the dates off the other one. Let me grab that. Okay, here's the card and the uh, chip dates on this one are 79, 1980. So this was, this was built in 1980, and uh, this one, you can see they're, uh, they're very, very different. Uh, this one is dating from 99. So these are, yeah, these are all 1999 uh, uh, chips on, on this one, okay? So those are the that's the revision there. All right. And then, oh, let's, uh, let's get out the third unit. It's held on very tight. It's whoever manufactured this case had very strange bend radiuses because it got very tight. Okay. All right, let's take the card out of this one. And uh, let's read some dates off of it. Uh, year 2000, year, the year 2000, the year, yeah, year 2000. So this is right around 2000. Uh, the interesting thing about this card is it still has the GAL. I've taken the labels off of these. I was kind of looking at it. Um, it has the GAL for the uh, comparator, and it has a different chip for the 20, 20, 256 by 4 uh, PROM. And so I think, unfortunately, they chose the wrong device, or they decided to get it from a different manufacturer, and somehow they needed to change this board. All right, so where's the other board? All right. So let's take at these two. Let's take a look at these two boards. Now these two boards are very interesting. They look, they look identical. I can zoom down a little bit. Uh, they look identical at first glance, and um, I've already removed. <laughs> I'm 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 stealing the parts off of this one. I've took some capacitors off of this one, but they were they were identical except. 
Um, if you look at the end here, so let me let me let me do this so I'm not shaking in the camera. Okay, the interesting bit here is at the bottom. This one has an HP logo, and this one says Agilent. <laughs> exact same card. Uh, HP and Agilent. So I'm trying to figure out what went on there. So right around the year 2000 is when HP and Agilent split. And even though this box says HP on the front, it was suddenly in the hands of Agilent. Agilent took over the test and measurement part of the company at that time. And so they had to produce this. And something went wrong somewhere. Like I said, it might have been this prom might have been something else. I don't think maybe they lost the artwork. I don't know what went on, but they had to spin this board. And so this board has an Agilent logo. An Agilent logo inside of an HP logoed device. So I don't know what went on, but anyway, Agilent and HP. So anyway, I thought it was an interesting kind of uh, lesson that even though you you know, d design a, a device, sometimes you have to live with it for a very long time, right? The, r the original one we looked at was 1980, and this is the year 2000. I think they're probably still building them today. I don't know. Um, but uh, you have to kind of go with the flow and make, make changes as, as necessary.